Steel the Nation, how we doing? How we doing? Man, it's never a dull moment uh, in the Berg these days. Steel is just traded for Justin Fields, a move that, you know, kind of seemed like it was potentially going to happen after they acquired Russell Wilson and then traded Kenny Pickett. You know, they needed a backup quarterback. Fields market has really cooled off, you know, didn't fetch the offers that I think a lot of Chicago people was wanting. Uh, so the Steelers end up getting basically for pennies on the dollar, man. Uh, the deal is a six round pick uh, that can turn into a fourth based on playtime incentives. So I think the way I understand it or the way the early reporting is if Fields plays over 50 percent of the snaps, uh, that pick goes to a fourth instead of a sixth. Um, but all in all, man, I mean, I don't know how you could be upset with this trade, to be completely honest with you. I mean, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Like anyone who isn't at least a little bit excited about this. I don't know. I don't know how you can't be excited. Like this dude has potential there. The tools are there. The flashes are there. You know, I did a film room for the channel that you guys can go check out. Uh, that's a full game breakdown on fields. Kind of gives you guys a good, um, you know, example of what he does well, what he struggles with, all that stuff. Uh, but I'll kind of talk about some pros and cons and just feels game in general on here as well. So that you guys can kind of get a better understanding for him. Uh, you know, fields, the only reason to like, I, I know a lot of people or a lot of the negativity comes down to like, oh, well, you know, if he was so good, why Chicago trading him? Well, Chicago's in a really interesting situation, right? Like they have the number one pick because of a, uh, a trade they did with Carolina last year. If they didn't have the number one pick, Justin Fields would still be a bear. Like, I think that's the thing I think a lot of people are missing. Like, he showed enough last year to where he was a starting caliber quarterback. I am a little bit surprised, even though I do understand, like, some of the limitations that Fields has and some of the areas that he needs to continue to grow. I am somewhat surprised that he did not, you know, garner more interest on the market. But, hey, it is what it is, man. I mean, that's that's not, that's not anybody's problem. At the end of the day, he's a stealer now, and that's really exciting. Um, shout out to my guy. Everybody's in here asking me, Daryl, Mike, about my dinner. Yeah, I took my wife. I promised her that I would take her on a date. So we went to dinner. And as I'm eating my steak, I look down at my phone and my phone is going crazy from Twitter notifications, text messages, everything else that the trade just got finalized. So, yeah, date night got cut a little bit short, but she she forgives me. She understands. So, um, but yeah, really excited. So just real quick, 180 people in here. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. Just make sure y'all like the video, please. That just helps the channel grow and it'll help, you know, uh, helps the good old engagement stuff. But let's talk a little bit about Fields, kind of stuff that he does really well just for a second. Um, you know, I think the first thing that everybody kind of knows about is the athleticism, right? Like Fields is a really gifted runner. Um, you know, in Chicago, they should have, in my opinion, leaned into this more. But full run game menus on the table. Uh, you can do, you know, zone, uh, zone read runs, which Arthur Smith did with a lot with Mariota when he was in Atlanta. Uh, you can do, you know, gap stuff with him, get him out in space. You can uh, get him on the perimeter, all that stuff. I mean, he's the other thing about Fields is like he's 6'3", 230, and he has a really dense frame. Like you will see him run through tackles. Uh, he's a difficult dude to get on the ground. There are times where he's in the pocket as a passer where guys are just basically hanging off of him, like some of those like old Big Ben highlights, uh, and he's just shedding tacklers like that. So really strong kid, but I think the acceleration – how quickly he gets up to full speed is really impressive. And then he's one of the fastest, I feel like, straight line quarterbacks that we've really ever seen at the NFL level. I mean, like legitimate, like 4-4 speed, um, destroys angles in the open field, all that stuff. Uh, as a passer, I think the the thing that Phil's does best as a passer is like he's a really gifted vertical passer. So throws the deep ball extremely well. When he pushes the ball down the field with touch and accuracy, I think that's where like you see him really shine. And uh, when he's playing with confidence – you can see it. Uh, the ball really pops out of his hands like he can generate velocity, but he can also throw a touch on the deep ball stuff. Um, you know, he's just really dangerous. I think the the things that you have to do with him is get him out of the pocket, move the launch point, try to utilize play action with him, some of the deep shot stuff. And that's why, like on Twitter, even like months ago, I was saying, you know, Fields is a difficult player to build an entire offense around because of his skill set. And I'll talk a little bit about why I think that. But that's why I always felt like Arthur Smith was kind of the best fit for him because some of the stuff that Smith did with Mariota in Atlanta, some of his own and also the heavy bootleg, the heavy play action, trying to move the ball down the field. I just think a lot of that stuff makes sense because of Justin's skill set. Like he does all that stuff extremely well. Um, 
you know, if you just look at, uh, you know, if you look at like the pro football focus numbers in terms of like accuracy, big time throw percentage, uh, completion percentage, all that stuff in terms of throwing the ball to the deep portion of the field over 20 yards, Fields was at near the top of the league last year. You know, they finally it, it's difficult, right? Because normally if a quarterback hasn't put it all together by year three, it's not going to happen. But the supporting cast and the surroundings were so bad in Chicago that I almost think like some people, um, even myself, find myself like wondering, you know, is it even fair to count those like first two years because of how bad things were on the perimeter? You know, they had some issues on the offensive line as well. I think, you know, him and the play caller just trying to mesh up what they wanted to do, how they wanted to construct the offense, all that stuff. But, you know, the thing is, Fields, electric arm, really good arm strength, can throw a velocity, throws the ball down the field really well. And then, you know, as a scrambler, like when things break down, when you play man coverage, you turn your back to him. He has the ability to make, you know, explosive plays happen with his legs. Now, now we're going to get into kind of like why I think things like haven't really worked out at the NFL level, at least yet for Justin. So first things first, um, you know, Justin's not extremely consistent on a play to play play by play basis. He is um, his accuracy underneath kind of comes and goes a little bit. A lot of that is because like his lower body mechanics are pretty bad, to be honest with you, uh, really struggles to get lined up to throw. Some of the stuff in quick game, that's really where it shows up. But, you know, he'll turn down open throws in quick game. He has kind of a loopier throw in motion. So his he doesn't have like the quickest release. And sometimes that takes away windows. He can kind of make up for that a little bit with his arm strength being what it is. Uh, but there's those reasons why, you know, I think of like quick game as like easy buttons for quarterbacks. But even Russ is kind of the same way. But Russ has a quicker throw in motion, whereas like those two guys don't really do that aspect of the game well which is kind of weird because there are some similarities between him and russ and i think i remember somebody tweeted this to me last night on twitter i would i would definitely give credit if i could remember who it was but i'm sorry they uh talked about how fields uh when he got drafted he was saying that he like looked up to russell wilson so i, I bet that dynamic is going to be pretty cool him being him now being in the same room all that stuff getting to learn from him you know russ obviously an electric playmaker, the deep ball stuff. When he was younger, he could, you know, be a really, really explosive threat as a runner as well. So a lot of the similarities that we're talking about with Fields right now, right? Um, but I just think, you know, the down-to-down -down consistency right now isn't there for Fields. I just think, like, the mechanics are kind of a mess. And just, like, kind of, for me, it's weird because he just – he seems like a guy who was almost trying to play too perfect – too often in Chicago, he overthought stuff. It seemed like he would pass up open targets. And when people were open underneath, he would want to kind of scramble out of the pocket and try to hit a home run instead of just, you know, moving the chains. And like, that's some of the stuff we talked about with Russ as well. So, um, but like I said, the accuracy inconsistent. Um, and then just generally speaking, like he hasn't been able to consistently quickly work through his progressions in terms of like getting to like backside digs and throwing the ball over the middle of the field and stuff like that. That hasn't been a strength for him. Uh, taking care of the football fumbles have been an issue. I'm not really concerned about the decision making as, as a thrower. Um, I think some of the interceptions last year were kind of fluky, but you know, I think again, what they got for him for a day three pick Fields, in terms of all the quarterbacks that were available this offseason, um, not counting the guys that were in the draft, Fields is the was the big upside swing and the guy with the most potential. And the fact that they were able to get him for a day three pick, huge dub, huge dub. I mean, like, I don't even see how you could be upset um, about this type of move, man. It just – it's beyond me. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, getting Russ – I, it's crazy. Like Omar has completely changed my perception, not just of him, not that I like view him better or worse, but just one of those things where I just didn't really expect him to be this ultra aggressive so fast, but absolutely insane. Like I love the move. I think they struck, you know, got him on a value. And at the end of the day too, Grayson, I appreciate the super chat, man. Did not expect to see something if more epic than Dune part two today. I haven't seen the movie. Is it good? Crazy potential for this team now. Epic. Yeah. I appreciate the super chat, man. Thank you guys. Um, if, if you guys could, just please make sure that you like the video. I see we got like 350 of our closest friends in here talking some ball. I just went over the strengths and weaknesses kind of of Justin Fields. But love the move. The other thing about this is, and uh, if you guys haven't seen the Russell Wilson film room, I went, I did like a really deep dive in terms of what Russ brings to the, to the Steelers offense, his fit within the, um, within the, uh, Arthur Smith offense, all that stuff. So you guys can go watch that for like my full thoughts on Russ. 
However, with that being said, like things didn't work out for Russ in Denver. And, you know, the Steelers had the opportunity to get him really cheap, pennies on the dollar. And I think that it's smart, too, to bring in a, another starting caliber quarterback just in case things don't work out. Like if Russ, you know, say, you know, he's at the age now in his mid 30s and his age, his game hasn't exactly aged extremely gracefully. Excuse me. Um, you know, I think that it's smart to bring in another quarterback who you feel comfortable going to if he either gets hurt again or if he struggles. And this is a really good kind of insurance plan for me. And also you get him in the building right now. He, he doesn't have to come in and start. It's already been said that Russ is going to be the starter. You go ahead, you bring fields in, you get to see what his mental makeup is, how his work ethic is, how he picks up the playbook, his chemistry with the team. Can he be a leader in the huddle? You get to see a fir- uh, get a firsthand look at all this stuff. And then you can make the decision on what happens for the future. Now, I don't want to sit here and say, like, the Steelers are trading him and it's an automatic secession plan. Russ is the quarterback this year. Fields is the quarterback next year. I'm not saying that that's how it's going to work out, but it could. That, that could be the plan. I don't know. And I think that you just have to see how it goes this season because there's so much unknown. How is Russ going to play this year? Is he going to have a bounce back season? What's he going to look like in this type of system? What's Justin going to look like in this type of system? There's so many unknowns. But at the quarterback position, man, it's kind of what we was talking about throughout the whole offseason. And the reason why I was like really ready to move on from Kenny was just I wanted to take some high upside swings. They went out and brought – not that I think that Russ is the type of quarterback that's like a – a ceiling raiser right now. Um, but he's a guy who potential Hall of Fame quarterback has won a ton of big games, been in big games, I think has the capability of providing you stability at the quarterback position. And then on top of that, you go get like a home run type of lottery ticket at Justin Fields for pennies on the dollar. That I mean, this this is the exact type of quarterback room that I, I would have wanted to envision, not even count, uh, taking into account that the Steelers gave up what, like – they're paying like five million or something like that on the cap, less than five million. And then they basically they got a better return for Kenny than the pick they sent for Fields. And I think Fields is better right now. So and with way more upside. So I don't know. It, it's an awesome, it, it's an awesome move in my book. It's definitely something that I wanted to see happen. I'm glad it happened. A lot of you guys are asking me about quarterbacks late in the draft. I don't, it's it's really tough. Um it's really tough if they're going to invest in a quarterback in the draft. They didn't show much interest in Indy. I know we talked about this a couple of days ago as well. So I'm not counting it out. Like, could they go get a Jordan Travis, Spencer Rattler, Michael Pratt, something like that? I don't know. But I do think, you know, it's possible. I just – I like having multiple options in the quarterback room. And even though there's a very clearly defined starter and backup role right now, I'm excited to see what it looks like, man. Preseason is going to be really fun. We're going to get to see some of these guys – um, you know, go. I, I am shocked too, a little bit, um, that they <laughs> that they traded with Omar Khan again. I can't believe that. I I thought I, a little part of me that th- thought that Poles was going to be kind of stubborn, and he was going to say, "All right, I'm not going to trade with the Steelers again because of how the how the Claypool trade ended up." But wow, that's um, it's crazy. I, I love the move though. I mean, very low risk, and I think it's got some like legitimately high upside. So. You get a starting caliber quarterback in my book for a day three pick. That's a dub. Crush your channel. I appreciate it. Thank you, Angel, very much. Very kind. So, but yeah, I'm excited. Um, I will take, I, I've been on here for like 13, 14 minutes. I'll take any questions um, that you guys have on fields or the offense or really anything Steelers related for a couple of minutes before I got to hop off and start, start working. Um, but 450 people in here real quick. Do me a favor. All right. Please, please, please like the video. And then there is a Justin Films, Justin Fields film room on the channel. So if you guys want to get a look at Justin, there's like a 45 minute film room breakdown. I will link it in the description. I will put it in the at the end of the video, all that stuff. Please make sure y'all go watch that if you're interested in seeing what, you know, what Fields can do. Um, I broke down the Atlanta game. That was his probably his best game from last season, but it also really gives a really good depiction of what he does extremely well what he struggles with and where, you know, we kind of need to go. So, um, yeah, no, no clickbait, no drama here, man. We just talk ball, talk ball. Um, this is a good question. Cause I know some people have already asked me this on Twitter, uh, packages with fields as quarterback or stick with one guy. I mean, I don't want to count it out, man, because in the red zone, I mean, Russ was really good in the red zone last year with, uh, with Denver. I think he had something like 20 touchdowns, 
But I, I definitely I'm not ever a fan necessarily of like rotating quarterbacks or anything like that. But I do like the idea of potentially getting him in there and some like, you know, design runs, stuff like that, taking advantage of his athleticism, short yardage, red zone situations like that. I think he could definitely be um, of use. But I mean, he's a legit quarterback, too. Like, I don't want to make, make it sound like I'm calling him a running back. But um, so are you getting a Fields or Wilson jersey? I don't know. I haven't bought a jersey in a long time. I just I don't know. I feel like uh, with how how much like players move around now, I just haven't really haven't really done a ton of that. Uh, who do you think will be? I kind of just answered this a little bit. I, I mean, really, it's anybody's guess, man. Anybody's guess. Uh, my guy John in here, early wide receiver pick is essential. Yes, like, we talked about this. Like we, the the Steelers are taking a receiver early, man. Y'all just better get ready for it. I mean, twenties on the table, but. They will have picked a, re- a receiver by the end of day two. And I was really happy that they were able – like, they've got four top 100 picks now. They held on to all of those uh, throughout the – you know, all the trade stuff and all that stuff. So, four top 100 picks, they can go and address all these different needs that they got. I anticipate that they're going to take a center early. I anticipate that they're going to take a receiver early, probably a corner, maybe a tackle as well. So, um how much easier does this make the draft? For me, it doesn't really make the draft a ton of, a ton easier. I mean, they were going to need to get a backup quarterback, but I was uh, messaging with some people last night while I was at work, and people were asking about like what they're going to do for a backup now that they traded Kenny. I, I said Fields was my preferred option, but Tannehill was also out there for the cheap. So uh, one of those two guys I felt like was going to be a Steeler, but that wasn't a position that I was necessarily wanting or needing or felt like needing to or was going to need to be addressed in the draft. I just, I thought they would just do it in free agency or a trade. And that's what they did. So they don't necessarily have to take quarterback now. Like I think they're, they're chilling with what they got. They can go bring in like an undrafted free agent or maybe sign a vet man type of veteran, whatever, but they could draft one. I just don't think it's really necessarily a need. Um, What's the planet center, man. That is a good question. I was a little bit, I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't, attack center a little bit heavier just because the free agent class had some names I thought were good fits for his system. But yeah, I mean, the big thing too, like if you go back and watch, cause I mean, I watched an ungodly amount of Russell Wilson games like after he signed for the film room that I posted for the channel, I think I watched like 15, like it was like a dozen games. But one thing I noticed was Cushenberry was his center in Denver, really good at pass protection. And typically when you have shorter quarterbacks like that, you really like you always want to protect the A and the B gaps in pass pro. But when you have shorter quarterbacks and stuff like that, you have to make sure you have a stout interior offensive line to kind of set the the depth of the pocket. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see. I don't know. Zach Frazier seems like a, a name that's coming up a lot. I think they'll be interested in him. We'll see about like Greg Barton, Jackson Powers Johnson, who I really like, all that stuff. Um, did you see? Did you see? I think it's Gary. <laughs> Go look at my Twitter timeline. See what I tweeted last night. It's funny. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, what happened was uh, Kenny, they told Kenny that they were going to, you know, look at acquiring a veteran quarterback, whatever. After Russ, uh, before that, he had talked to all the receivers minus Deontay, I think, um, saying that, you know, they were going to have a chance. Like, he wanted them to come out and work with him in the offseason, go to a location, get some throwing in, all that stuff. Typical, like, wide receiver, like, quarterback stuff that you do. Uh, But after they signed Russ, the next day, he texted all the receivers and said, like, hey, I'll see y'all. I'll see y'all in the spring. So, is what it is. That's I mean, that when I heard that, that's kind of how I knew that, like, there was a good chance that he was going to like kind of push his way out, which whatever, man, quarterback room's a lot better now than it is last year. I feel like even if, you know, there's not really necessarily somebody that I'm fully, fully confident long-term. I, I just, I like, I like what they've done at the position, given the resources and the chances that they had available to them. So uh, very exciting time. I've been hearing a Debo Samuel. I, Zach said that they reached out about Debo, man. So We'll see. I think Debo would be fun in an Arthur Smith offense. You know, the things that, you know, Smith could do. Um, this is a good question from Nick. Do you think the slow feet when it comes to Phil's drop back is a fixable part of his game? Yeah, I just think, like, in general, um, I do. I always think it's easier to slow quarterbacks down than to speed them up, and that comes from, like, their drop, their eyes, in terms of how they process the game, all that stuff. With that being said, um, you know, Fields does. I mean, that's that's part of the issue too. Is you know he holds on to the ball a long time, but it just takes him a long time to get to the back his back foot, and that's 
you know, I don't, I, I want to say that it's fixable, but I, I mean, I, I can't imagine that Chicago didn't try to fix that. I, I just, I don't know. Chicago's coaching staff to me, especially on the offensive side of the ball, that was not very impressive in a lot of different factors, but I would be surprised if they didn't at least try to fix it. I don't know. I don't know who Fields is, who Fields works with in the off season either. So um, what's Khan's next move? I don't know, man. I, I know Tyler Boyd's on the table. I know like there's, you know, it's been reported and like I can 100% assure you that there's interest on both sides. The problem is Tyler Boyd has other big name quarterbacks that are trying to get him to come play with them. So there's a couple like superstar level quarterbacks that would like Tyler Boyd in the fold. And I think that there's kind of a hold up there in terms of like, does he want to come home and play in the Berg or does he want to go try and win or play with some, some potential hall of famers. So it's a tough decision. I think that's why he's taking his time. The Van Jefferson move from yesterday, it doesn't really like move the needle for me either way. I think Van, I started watching some tape on him last night just to kind of get a good feel. He's more of like a wide receiver, three wide receiver, four type to me. Doesn't really necessarily move the needle. Tyler Boyd, could, he's still on the table. They still are probably going to take one regardless early in the draft, all that stuff. This is actually a really good question from Aaron. Can we extend fields and avoid, avoid the fifth-year option of $25 million? The answer is yes. Uh, Green Bay did something similar with Jordan Love. The problem is, what what are you going to offer him? Because you you want to make sure it's a good faith offer. But like if you're if you're going to extend Fields without extending Russ, I don't know that that's necessarily the move that you want to do either because of the messaging it sends to the room. Like, all right, next year this is Fields' team. Because say you extend Fields, right? Give him like an extra year or two deal. Uh, for cheaper than the franchise tag, what are you going to do? I mean, you can't keep both of them next year, right? If if he's on a deal and then Russ is a free agent, and then you have to go sign him if you want to keep him, I don't see, I don't see an extension coming. But you don't necessarily have to pick up the fifth year option. If Fields is going to be your backup, then you might just be be able to ride out the rest of the season. And then if he has to play or gets to play, you can evaluate him off of that. And then at the end of the day, as soon as the season's over. Yeah, you may have to compete with other teams on the market, but you still have the franchise tag option. Like, say, you know, again, I'm just throwing out all the hypotheticals here because of your question. Uh, say Fields, say Russ gets hurt or struggles and Fields comes in midseason, right? And he just comes in, he lights the world on fire. And he shows enough to where the Steelers are at least like, okay, this is our guy for the next couple of years. We're going we're gonna to invest some money into him. Say they can't come to an agreement or something like that. Fields wants to test the market. They could always franchise tag it and then work out a long-term deal off of that. So there's moves that are – or there's options in place to kind of protect themselves. So uh, this is the best Steelers offense for a long time. All right, I will – I got like eight more minutes. If y'all haven't already, please make sure that you like the video again. Uh, there's – I'm going to say it again, but there's a Justin, film, Justin Fields film room. Uh, up on the channel from like three, four weeks ago. You guys can go watch that if you guys want something to look at in terms of figuring out what he is as a player, all that good stuff. It's very in-depth. I think you guys will really like it if you haven't already seen it. Uh, with the departure of Johnson and us looking to take a receiver in the first, possibly a center, how concerned are you for the tackle position? I'm a little concerned that they're going to run it back with uh, Dan Moore as one of the tackles. I don't want to get you guys like riled up, but Dan Moore has a lot of, a lot of fans uh, inside the locker room. There are specific coaches that have a lot of power that really like Dan Moore. And that's, he could very well still be the starter next year. I, I, I would love to upgrade at that position, but the reality of it is, you know, you're going to have weak positions on, you know, every offense, every defense. I, I don't know. I, I personally would, want to upgrade at left tackle like for example if Amarius Mims was there at 20 I would have a hard time passing him up you know and running it with you know him and Broderick next year but I'm also not as high on the day two tackles as I feel like a lot of other people are that's just me though um pick up his option decline I extended like two minutes I don't see I don't think two years 10 million I don't think Justin would accept that I personally wouldn't because he can go get 10 two years 10 million on the on the free agent market i feel like next year as long as nothing crazy happens but i don't know i mean it's all hypothetical it's it's hard to know like what each side is really thinking um i saw this did the window do something about dante dante jackson's contract kind of already passes by 
uh, I know it was, I think it was the, the 15th or the 16th. They delayed the, delayed the day on it. I don't know. I don't have any information on that. I haven't really done a ton of digging into like what their thought process is there either. I'm just trying to get to know Dante a little bit as a player. I watched two games yesterday, but does Arthur Smith, this is a good question. Does Arthur Smith have a history of developing quarterbacks? I wouldn't say developing quarterbacks. I mean, you think about the guys that he's had success with. I mean, Tannehill, he was kind of a guy that, you know, came from a previous offense and he got the most out of him. It was a good fit from a, you know, personnel scheme, you know, all that stuff. But I wouldn't say that he's a guy who's had a history of developing QBs. You know, it didn't work with Mariota. Uh, He had decent success with Matt Ryan his first year in Atlanta, but he was just an aging guy. It was clear that they wanted to move on there for money reasons. And, uh, of course, Ritter, they drafted him in the se- or the third round. Of course, third round picks are always – I mean, any draft quarterback is a crapshoot. But, you know, things didn't work out with him. I will say this about Ritter. You know, even with Ritter last year, he was middle of the pack, like 16th, I think, in passing success rate. They The Falcons moved the ball last year. The reason why the Falcons didn't win more games was because he kept turning the football over and they were terrible in the red zone. Like their defense played above expectation. The offense moved the ball. I know. I think there was a lot of people down on the Falcons offense because of like fantasy football aspects. You know, they didn't get the ball a lot or as much as they should have to Drake London, to Cal Pitts. I think some of that does fall on the play caller. Some of that falls on the quarterback. Their offensive line and run game took a step back. But I mean, it wasn't, it's not like it was horrific, you know? Uh, hey, Gino was wrote off until he sat behind Russ just saying, yeah. I mean, we'll see, man. I, I think it's it. I think again, the fields move itself is it's a home run in my book, just because I I'm a firm believer in man. Like when it comes to the quarterback position, you just need to keep taking as many high upside swings as you get, because the reality of it is, at any point in time, if you can get a top ten ish quarterback and you've got one of those eight or eight ish guys that really elevate your team your offense and can carry the franchise on their back that is invaluable i mean you guys all know that though i mean y'all y'all watch bed do it for 15 years or whatever before his elbow blew out but yeah it's invaluable that's why everybody's searching for him but the thing i like about Khan so far is i feel like he's done a really good job self-evaluating the roster to take a look at where the needs are where did they miss in terms of like players they evaluated you know they they've done things and quickly moved on like they they signed you know they traded granted these these weren't huge moves but they traded for Allen robinson last year not a ton of production okay we'll move on they tried the kenny pick in the first round two years not enough production not enough flashes to really hold on to let's move on same thing with patrick peterson they came in like peterson had a had an okay season i mean he moved around a lot he but at the end of the day he wasn't he wasn't going to provide value at the cap hit that he had this year. So they moved on. I just think that the self-evaluation part of it, that's a big part of being a GM. And I just really, uh, I really appreciate that. Richard, my guy, thank you so much for the super chat. Love you DB. Now let's go get Jefferson. (laughs) Are you talking about Justin? I don't know if Justin's happening, man. I I don't want to get y'all's hopes up for that. I think Tyler Boyd is realistic. I don't know about Justin Jefferson. Debo, IU, I mean, there are some veteran options available. That would be freaking crazy. I, I don't even, I can't even imagine. Um, what's up? What's up? Yeah, no, I can't. It's concentrating for my homes next. All right, I got a couple minutes. I'm going to try to find relevant questions. Patrick, no, no quarterback competition. I told y'all, I mean, just from what I understand of it, Russ was brought in to be the starter. Like that was communicated to him. Like he was not going to sign. I, I, I truthfully, I don't think that he would, he would have signed very quick as quickly if he was going to have to come in and like worry about his job. That's just my opinion. That's from what I know, what I've heard, uh, but no quarterback competition. I think Russ is the starter. Justin's the backup. All that stuff. What if Russ wins a playoff game, let him walk, expect Justin to do the same. Hey man, the way I see it is let the best let the best man win. Whoever you know is the quarterback of the team is cool. I, I think either option's fine. If Russ wins a playoff game, I feel like it would be pretty hard to imagine that he wouldn't be back next year. 
Because, I mean, if they win a playoff game, that means they, I mean, they've done something that they hadn't done in the last, what, six, seven seasons, something like that. I mean, we got a pretty significant playoff drought going in the Berg right now. So, I mean, playoff win. I mean, you listen to Russ talk, though, too. Like, it, it's, I, I really, ho- really hope he succeeds, man. He seems like he's, he's really hungry. He's got a big chip on his shoulder. You can tell, you know, he, he wants to play well. So, I hope he's able to break that drought. Uh, get Boyd. He led us to four state champs. Yeah, man. Hometown hero. It would be a cool story. And Boyd's actually a pretty good, uh, a pretty, I mean, he's a pretty solid player. Really solid number three. Preseason's meaningless, but will be entertaining for sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to say it's like completely meaningless, but like at the same time, we saw that it can kind of lie a little bit. I think some people got a little over, overconfident after last year, but is what it is. Any updates on Connor Williams? Uh, you know, I haven't heard anything. Have y'all? I, I don't think I have, but I know Williams is a really good player. I think he would be a nice fit for Miami. Miami went out and got Aaron Brewer instead. So I don't know if he's going to return there. The thing that kind of sucks, man, is, um, you know, Williams is coming off that significant injury. If he was ready to go, like, I think he'll be probably ready to go week one, but if he wasn't coming off an injury, I would really like the idea of, you know, maybe putting him in. I mean, he would probably be too expensive at that point or maybe more than what they would want to spend. But I'd like the idea of him at the pivot. He's a really solid player. And I think he's still in his, like, I want to say he's like 27, 20, 27-ish, something like that. So uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. A couple more here. I do, I, I kind of just out of curiosity did look at Cortland Sutton's money and stuff. Um I think he could be had for pretty cheap because he does have a significant cap hit this season. And I don't think the Broncos are really going to be, I don't think they're going to be competitive and I don't know that they're actually going to try to be competitive. I think they're probably just trying to take a reset. So, um, nah, I, Daniel, I, look, Khan's done outstanding work, man. Like I'm extremely pleased, very happy with his work over the last two years, hundred percent. He does He deserves credit. Cause I mean, he, the situation he inherited wasn't a bad one. I don't think it was the best one either. And anytime you take over a franchise that doesn't, that misses or missed on a first round quarterback that you didn't draft yourself, even though he was, he was a part of that decision. Um, But like I said, I've, I've agreed with almost every move that he's made over the past two years. And even the moves that I haven't necessarily agreed with or loved, I've been able to at least see the, the vision in terms of like what he's thinking. And I think that that at least, you know, I can see the argument for making it. There hasn't been any just incredibly head scratching decisions, um, which I felt like was becoming quite common for me when Colbert was still there. Daryl, thank you so much for the Superman. Thanks for hopping on so quickly and talking with Steelers Nation. Yeah, I drove. Well, I had my wife drive so that I could start some notes and get everything uh, situated, but yeah, we were out about 25, 30 minutes away at a steakhouse, which was really good. We had a good date night, but she had to drop me off at the house while she goes and picks up my kiddos. Cause she was like, I know you've got work to do. So shout out, shout out to my wife for being a, being a trooper favorite round two wide receiver options, man, Jalen McMillan from Washington, Ricky, uh, Ricky Pearsall from Florida. Those are two of my guys. I think those guys, both of those guys can play inside, outside, but I think they would play in the slot here next year. But yeah, those are, those are two different guys that I really like. Do you think we could trade up in the second for AD Mitchell? Nah, I think AD Mitchell is going top 20, man. Hunter, I, I really do. I don't know if he's, I, I think he could potentially be drafted maybe as early as like 15 to the Colts. So. I don't see him slipping out of the first round, man. Especially like how well he tested. I think the I think his film's really good. I was have been on the AD Mitchell bandwagon for a little bit, but when the numbers match up like that, I think it's uh it's tough to see him get out of the first round. Shout out Mrs. TB. Yeah, she appreciates you guys. She definitely does. Um, how do you feel about Roman Wilson? He's tough as nails, man. I just. He's he's a good player. I just wish he was a little bit bigger. Like I know he's like 5'10, 180. He plays bigger than that. He's tough. He'll go over the middle. He catches the balls at the seam. Um, catch radius is pretty good too for a guy that size. But I just I, I wish he was just a little bit bigger. A lot of people ask me about Leggett. Um, 
I actually haven't watched. I probably watched the least of him of all like the top 10 or 15 receivers, but I was conflicted coming out of his evaluation to be honest with you. But South Carolina was a difficult offense to watch, man. They just, they didn't have a ton of talent to be honest with you. Rattler was consistently running for his life back there. The offensive line was terrible. Um, you know, look at what didn't break out until what is fifth year or something like that. I know there were some circumstances behind the reasoning why, but, I'll definitely check him out. Um, My game plan of what I really want to do, and this is kind of getting into draft uh, talk again, but the uh, the game plan, I want to drop some some ranking videos, some like wide receiver rankings and cornerback rankings for you guys and all that stuff to kind of get you guys some more info on a lot of these prospects for the draft. If you guys would be interested in that, be sure to let me know. Uh, Pierce sounds pretty good. I wonder who else is around 20, though. Brian Thomas Jr. I think that's in play. Brian Thomas Jr., I want to say from LSU, I want to say it was Ledyard, the first person that actually brought up this comp, but um, he's got a little Martavis to him just with, with in terms of his usage at LSU, heavy, heavy vertical receiver, loads of talent, big. But I actually think uh, I actually think Baker is better at the catch point than Martavis was, or more consistent, but that's just my opinion. But he's a he's a freak, no doubt. I mean, I I, I mean I would be very surprised if they didn't at least look at him your javon baker thoughts very good player i could see him being in play for the steelers too guy who can beat press good route runner for his size yeah i mean bigger receivers too i think you talk about guys that have helped their stock i think baker was one of them that helped helped his stock this year it's kind of weird that the hype around him i feel like was like he was really underrated. And I feel like for a couple of weeks leading up to the combine, he was getting a little more buzz and then the combine hit. And I guess maybe he didn't test like how everybody else was expecting, like out of the, out of the gym, like some of these other guys. And I feel like the hype is kind of cooled off. So AD Mitchell, that's who I want at 20. If they take a receiver, to be honest with you, I know a lot of questions, a lot of questions are about that. Is Pearsaw too old to draft? I mean, he is 24. I mean, the way that I look at uh, prospects, I think I explained this in a recent video, but the way I kind of look at prospects is, you know, if they're 24 or older, I kind of drop them down like a, a slight notch. And then if they're, you know, 21 or younger, I'll like bump them up a little bit. But it's not like I'm not an analytics person that says like you you have to always draft 20 or 21 year olds or whatever. That's help, but two with um Pierce all like I, I think that there were just some circumstances that prevented him from really playing consistent ball. Um, but I do think he's a really good player and he would be absolutely fantastic for the Steelers. Another guy that has spec. I mean, I won't say like spectacular, but a really good catch radius, like adjust well to poorly throwing balls. He didn't have the best quarterback play this past year either. Consistently produced dude knows how to get open. Good route runner. He's tough. He's a willing blocker too. like play strength is a little bit of an issue for him, but um he definitely he tries so um let's see you guys just got a new fan to wave the terrible towel done with the bears <laughs> dumbest trade ever well welcome to the berg chat make sure y'all uh y'all give him a warm welcome to the berg we'll take all uh reasonable and non-toxic fans in the berg these days um all right guys jermaine burton yes another guy i'm i'm curious interview is gonna be really uh important for Burton. So yes, there are some red flags there. None that I actually know of. I'm just saying like talking to other people in Indy, that was the consensus. Um, I still do think the Steelers could potentially add a receiver in free agency. I mean, maybe it's going to be Tyler Boyd. I don't know. We'll see some, definitely some smoke around that, but thank you guys so much for jumping on with me. I rushed home because I want to talk some ball with y'all. Thank y'all. Uh, Just make sure you like the video. And then again, if you guys want more Justin Fields content, there's a 40 minute film room on the channel. Y'all can go over there. I'll post it out. Everything else. Please make sure y'all go watch that. Uh, Like comment on that video too. All that stuff's greatly appreciated. I am going to take my daughter to get ice cream and then I'm going to come back home, pop on some film, and then hopefully I'll have some more content as long as no other freaking signings break before I can get to it. I'll hopefully have some content in the next like 24 hours, hopefully for you guys, a uh, film room on one of the free agent signings or something. But sometime tomorrow, maybe early Monday, I don't know. But I appreciate all of the support, all the love, um, and you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. 
have a good one peace and love